Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm going to look at implicit differentiation. First I'll show you what implicit differentiation is and when to use it and then we'll work through three questions. As ever please do grab a pen and paper, pause the video and have a go yourself, rewinding and fast forwarding as you need. I hope this is helpful. Let's get started. So the basic premise of implicit differentiation is when you're trying to differentiate something that's a function of x and y, when x and y are tied up with each other and really hard to disentangle from one another, and they equal a different function of x and y on the other side. So in other words, it's really difficult to get just y on its own to have a y equals blah 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 expression. So when you've got that, um, what you need to do is use implicit differentiation. And um, This looks a bit complicated, but all it's saying is to differentiate your function of y with respect to x, what you need to do is differentiate your function of y with respect to y instead, but times it by dy by dx. So can you see how this works here? You, if you cancel dy on the top and the bottom, then you're left with the same thing as you've got over here. So that's what you're trying to achieve, and that is equal to it. So in practice, differentiate your function of y with respect to y, and then just multiply by dy by dx. So in practice, it's extremely easy to do. Just differentiate your y's and write dy by dx after them. Let's work through some examples. So I've picked for our first example a classic case where it's difficult to differentiate is the equation of a circle, um, some sort of circle here, actually it might be an ellipse, but um, from your circle work in the past you may remember that um, to get the gradient of a point on a circle you need to find the gradient of the radius and use the perpendicular gradient. And you use that method because without implicit differentiation there's no way of differentiating this. So can you see that you can't easily get y as on its own on one side of the equation? So we, the best way to differentiate all the way through is using implicit differentiation. So let's differentiate this. The first term is to do with x, so that can happily differentiate as usual. And then the next term is a y term. So we're going to differentiate that with respect to y first, so that will be 8y, and then because it's a y term we need to times by dy by dx. So do you see you're just differentiating that how you normally would and write dy by dx after it. Okay, next term is just x, so that's fine, and then the y term you just need to remember your dy by dx. 7 would differentiate to nothing because it's a constant. And that is it differentiated. Now we're used to having dy by dx on its own on one side of the equation and that's a nice neat way of writing it. So let's try and do that. So we'll get these two terms of dy by dx on, together on one side and everything else on the other. So you might have done that differently to me. Um, I brought these two terms over to the right hand side so it would be positive 2 and negative 8y and I factorised that. Um, I've brought those over to this side because I didn't want loads of negatives here but obviously you can do it the other way around if you want. And now to make dy by dx the subject I'm just going to divide by that and I'll put the dy by dx back over here like we're used to seeing. Just swap the sides around so we'll have that divided by 2 minus 8y. And that's it, that's your expression for the gradient function of that circle. Hope that doesn't feel too difficult. It's just a case really of remembering the dy by dx whenever you've got a y term and then practicing making dy by dx the subject at the end. Let's do a second example now. Okay, here we've got the second example question, and this time I've made a focus, find the gradient when x is 1, um, so we're going to differentiate this, and often you do end up with a very complex looking answer, so um, instead of spending ages simplifying it, all you need to do for a question like this is plug in x is 1 to get a numerical answer. So let's try and 
differentiate this now. The first term here to differentiate, we've got an x times by a y. Um, so to separate them out and to differentiate, we need the product rule. So do check out my other video on that if you haven't already and practice the product rule. I'll differentiate the x bit first, so that will be 6x squared times by the y squared, and then keep the x term the same but differentiate the y. I'm just putting a little dot to show that I'm multiplying, you don't need it if you don't want to. Now because I've um, differentiated the y bit, that's where I need the dy by dx, so that's using the product rule with implicit differentiation. Now let's move on to this term, that's just a x, so that's okay as it is. And on the 3y, we need the dy by dx. Fab, let's simplify and collect up the dy by dx to make that the subject. Okay, and then we can put in x as 1 to get the gradient. Um, we also need to put in a y value, of course, don't we? So we'll have to get that from the original expression to find what y is when x is 1. So that's the expression I get when x is 1 in the original, and that looks like a quadratic. I hope you can see this orange pen okay. So I get two answers here, I get either 5 over 2 or minus 1. So in each of those cases I'll get the gradient. I've run out of space but we're just putting these values into the gradient now. So x is 1 and for this one y is 5 over 2 or 2.5. So just put that all into the calculator and I get minus 65 over 14. Again this one putting x is 1 and y is minus 1 into all of that and I get that the gradient is a seventh. Fab! Well done if you got that right. Let's move on to one more question now. Okay last question and this one is a past exam question so let's take a look at this. Um, I've chosen as examples in this video I've um, got some product rule going on, we need the product rule for this one as well um, and I've got a bit of exponential here but obviously with implicit differentiation you need to just practice using it with all kinds of differentiation so practice questions with trigonometry in as well and you can also use it with the quotient rule just remembering every term that's got a y you put the dy by dx after um, but in this question, let's practice using it with the product rule and with the exponential here. So, first thing, let's differentiate all of this. I'm going to differentiate the y here first, so that's just 1, and we'll need the dy by dx times by your bit with the x. And then leaving the y but differentiating the x, and I'm putting a dot there show you that I'm timesing, or you could just put that in brackets to protect that minus sign. Um, differentiating a function of e is again in my last video on the product and quotient rule, so check that out if you haven't already. And I'll just kind of curve down here. <laughs> differentiating 2x and the y term with a dy by dx. Uh, again, like before, I'm just going to collect the dy by dx to make it the subject. And then put the other stuff on the other side. Dividing that down. Then we need the gradient of the normal, so we can get the gradient of the curve at this point by substituting in the x and y values, 0 and 1. e to the 0 is 1. 
We want the equation of the normal, not the tangent, so we need the perpendicular gradient to that, so that will be, flip it and change the sign, so it will be a quarter. And we know the coordinates it passes through, x and y, so we can use the y1, y minus y1 and equals mx minus x1, or whatever it is you use to, for a straight line. And that is it. Fantastic. Well done if you got that right. And keep practicing lots of different examples, as I said earlier. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful. Keep practicing and have fun. Thank you for watching.